beautiful time to be a multi-sport draft elite on the platform of the People Underdog Fantasy. Here we got all sorts of stuff going on in the con- or contest going in the lobby right now. Uh, Masters is just around the corner, so we got the albatross pushed up to the front there to start filling that bad boy up. We got tons of beautiful structures for daily baseball, uh, daily NBA, and then uh, you know a little bit of puck stuff there. And then we're gonna do um, we're gonna do lots of stuff this week. Feels like a five show week. I'm not gonna lie because there's just so much going on. But we're gonna hit on the dance service. The hoops guys uh, haven't been as in tune with the daily streets ever since baseball started. So we'll go back to our roots of uh, hashtag hoops guys by hitting a dance at the end here. But starting baseball, and uh, I don't know, man. This guy might be on cloud nine right now. Uh, eerily similar start to last year for uh, for his beloved Pirates. Nez, how we feeling, dude? He said I'm not allowed to to talk about the Pirates and Jared Jones. So um, am I allowed? Do I have permission? Am I? Permission, permission to discuss. Permission not to take over the entire show with it. I'll do my best. Uh I mean, they're they're not a bad team, and mm-hmm. when you face the Marlins, you should win, you know, more games than you lose against them. A sweep is nice. It's just what you would expect. This is sort of how last year started. Whenever last year, before everybody got hurt, they had a pretty soft schedule, and I wasn't getting out ahead of myself then. I mean, I was, I was, I was having fun with it, but like, <laughs> but I knew damn well that they were beating like bad teams that they they should have beat. Mm-hmm. They should, they, you know, they were supposed to beat the Marlins. They should beat the Nationals too. They've got a three games, uh, three game stint with the Nats. They play today and then they have off tomorrow since they didn't have off at all in that Marlins series, which is like awesome. But uh, yeah, man, th- th- things are looking up, but the rotation is still, you know, it's not spotless, right? We mm-hmm. just saw Bailey Falter for whatever reason having a job Falter. still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the jokes write themselves for, for Bailey. Uh, but I don't expect to see him much longer. But, you know, the, the real story, obviously, is Jared Jones. And wow, mm-hmm. did he have a debut. Yeah, 10 Ks in five innings. He gave up three earned, question mark? I think it was three earned, right? Uh, I don't even know if it was three, to be honest. I don't think it was even yeah, that was, many. Yeah, but he was hitting 101 on the gun there. So, yeah, pretty reasons to get excited. 22 whiffs was like the big wow. takeaway for me. Uh, I nice. was, uh, yeah, that was, <laughs> that, that was rare. It was three, it was three earned there, mm-hmm. but 22 whiffs is a lot, man. That would have led the league yesterday. I don't know if that led all the starters whenever he did start, but that's, mm-hmm. that's highly unusual. <laughs> 22 yeah. whiffs, especially from a, from a pirate. So, uh, Obviously, we're we're stoked about that from a fan standpoint, and uh, can't wait to, you know, once we get these rookies pushed into the to the to the uh, player pools to start taking some Jared Jones, because man, that's going to be fun. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, speaking of whiffs, there were a couple good starts from opening day there. I haven't talked about opening day because uh, you did the solo on Friday there, but Garrett Crochet, man, he was getting big time whiffs. I think it was like 19, 20 ish range as well. So, uh, I don't know. Cole Reagan's nice start to confirming some priors uh, there. What, what were some of your biggest takeaways, uh, just macro, from the first opening weekend? I mean, so far, like, what there, were, there weren't too many surprises. You know what I mean? It kind of felt like a lot of what took place was sort of what what we all expected. I think the biggest surprise, at least for me, was uh, your boy, uh, Jordan Hicks. Have, mm. having himself a nice start for yeah for the uh for the Giants, which is major. You know they 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 need him to be good, and he 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 looked the part. He looked like a looked like a major league starting pitcher, a good one. He he really missed. Uh, it, it's it's weird to say for a guy who you know could touch 103, 104 when he was in the bullpen. For a guy like that, it's weird to say that he didn't have a swing and miss pitch, and. It was kind of true, man. For whatever reason, he just didn't get a ton of whiffs. This splitter, man, the splitter is going to be what what saves that arsenal, I think. And yeah, I was very impressed. I was very impressed with that one. Um, I was a little bit cloud nine myself over the weekend, getting out over my skis, Nez, with uh, some of my boys 
doing work over the weekend. It was nice to see uh, Christopher Morell get off to a good start. Tyler O'Neill get off to a good start. Mitch Haniger off to a good start, despite the team not being off to a good start. Um, I, I was getting a little pumped up for some of my quote unquote, my guys there. Uh, anyone else that you were excited about this weekend? Um, f- I have a lot of Flaherty in best ball. So mm, good one. Nice yeah, he- little start from Flaherty. Uh, he looked good. I'm excited, anxious to see how uh, Christopher Sanchez looks. Cause I ended up loading up on him um, in the second half of draft season. He ended up becoming one of my highest drafted pitchers. Uh, so mm-hmm. Anxious to see that. And then uh, Grayson Rodriguez took care of business. So excited to to see that. So I, I feel I feel good so far. Um I need I you know, we need I need I need bigger sample sizes. I'm uh getting 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 too excited about about what I have going on right now. Because you know, I look at all my teams and I'm like, oh wow, like there's a lot of good teams here, you know. Like I like yeah. I, I like the way I drafted so far, but it's been one series. <laughs> nice, yeah. Um, you brought up uh, Christopher Sanchez made me think of the Reds lineup. Reds doing some very interesting things with the lineup. We obviously hit on, you know, Ellie being low key buried at that sixth spot as of right now, but they are flipping that thing all over the place, dependent on the handedness of the starter. Um, Jonathan India has been leading off almost every single day, but Will Benson jumping from second to nine, second to nine, based on the handedness, Fraley in and out of the lineup, but either hitting fifth or out for Stuart uh, uh, Fairchild. Um, yeah, just very interesting there. But uh, Christian Incarnacion Strand just locked into that three hole. That's that's pretty fun to see. Yeah, that's big time. I mean, it's it's crazy how quickly things can change for players in, in baseball where he was squeezed out of playing time to like, oh, you're every day and mm-hmm. you're in the three hole. Uh, yeah, did you did you see what he did yesterday? I did not. No, Reds were down to their final uh, out, and they hit back to back tanks to walk it off. And it was Will oh, Benson wow. and then Christian Encarnacion Strand. Wow, off of yeah. I, that was Finnegan. That was, I think that was throwing right. I know he. Yes, he, yeah. He blew the I didn't closer. see how he did it. Yikes! Yeah, yeah. It, was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty legit. Um, I wanted to reset a couple things from the weekend. Um, we did a really nice post come our way from a player I've seen on the site, but, um, you know, did, had never spoken to, didn't know that they were aware of us, but uh, whatever, uh, Joe Cowley, uh, scooped the, the shit out of an NBA leaderboard, uh, a first, second and third, uh, RT 99 X, uh, big shout out to, to him. But sending us some flowers where it's just like, hey, man, wasn't aware of the crossover between season long and DFS. Found us, found these games, now finding success. So, uh, you know, just some kind words there and and big shouts to him. And then big shouts to some of the other community members over the weekend there. Chipsy on opening day. Uh, Jordan Chen had one, uh, I guess it was two nights ago. You had the winner take all. I haven't spoken to you since the winner take all on opening day. Shouts there. Uh, who else? I'm, who am I missing here? Brad had back to back banks. I don't know if you mentioned oh. that. Is it is it baseball season? Because uh, <laughs> BRDMC is is winning if it's baseball season. And shout uh, out to Brad. You you mentioned GNPC, right? Uh, sorry, no, I, I didn't. Andrew as well. Yeah, yeah, with he, the, yeah he had a big night. Uh, nailing Matt the Chapman Matt scrolled Chapman. the F down. Yeah, it's crazy, Matt Chap- dude. Matt Chapman, evergreen statement. Matt Chapman. If he could just be April Matt Chapman forever, he, he might be a Hall of Famer. If yeah. Matt Chapman starts so effing hot every single year. He tears the cover off the ball, and then he falls off the face of the earth. Did the exact same thing last year with the Blue Jays. Hopefully, he can exact same it. thing. The exact yeah. same thing. Yeah. Uh, Zeke adding a couple more here. The Cutter Crawford start. I mean, everyone on the Red Sox pitched well this weekend uh, against the the Mariners. Uh, a little scared there. Even the game that they won was a one nothing game with a solo tank. Um, offense looked putrid thus far. But yeah, the Brendan Fought start looked looked really good too. Um, watched a little bit of that one yesterday. Good thing we didn't react, overreact to uh, the Yamamoto start. Five scoreless there as well last night. Um, yeah. I was trying to get out ahead of that. I had a lot of uh, Cardinals 
stacks because I didn't see a lot mm. of people doing it. So yeah. I was like, what if, what if he's, what if, what if, what if he's actually going to get shelled? And uh, di- didn't, didn't quite work out, but um, <laughs> it's all right. We're having a good season though. We're having a good start to the season. Uh, you know, we've got, got 150 max up for, uh, for this main slate today. So I've been cranking drafts nice. into that main slate um, before I went to bed. Because I knew I would be able to do the twenty for the early slate when I woke up. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a close one. It was, it was, it, was, uh, it filled up pretty faster at the end. Um, yeah, I only got fifteen in. Mm-hmm. But knowing that, like, I want to get as many main slates as possible. I, I ended up putting drafts in the hopper before I went to bed with, like, you know, my with cute custom cues for every mm-hmm. one that I did. So now I'm at like seventy five. But like, I don't know how Good far for I'll you. Get, Holy. But, you know, it's just a way to get volume in. Like, I want to get volume in. I want to. I want to have a ton of. You know, I'm the. I'm rake back champion, baby. Like, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to get that rake back. So, you know, got to get. Got to get the volume in, uh, and then I'll draft accordingly. You know, after. But uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's um. It, it, it's been. It's been fun. Love it. Um, shout out to John here. Said he got the second in Saturday's uh, Diamond After Dark slate. Nice. Love that. Congrats there. Yeah, what's wrong with the Astros, man? I don't, I don't know. They ran into a little bit of pitching, but they just couldn't score with uh, runners in scoring position. I mean, they had guys on the on the bases there, and I don't know. I was I was pretty impressed with how Carlos Rodon looked first time out. Made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside uh, for that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm still taking him today against uh, Bowden Francis. I believe his name is. Um, for the oh, Blue you're talking Jays. about the Astros, yeah, just in general, yes, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's slow start, slow start against the Yankees. I know they wanted that one, yeah. Francis won that rotation <laughs> spot, um, over uh, Ricky Peterman at the end there, and he's the fifth starter now. He's an older, older triple A guy, like 27, 28, something like that. Yeah, I was looking at some of his uh, his arsenal. He was a relief pitcher last year, and it's like mm-hmm. primarily fastball, curveball. Okay. Um, the curveball is like really long and loopy. Um, in my opinion, it doesn't really pair well with the fastball. It typically doesn't when guys have big, long, loopy curveballs like that, and it's mm-hmm. their second and only other pitch. Um, yeah, the only time that ever worked well yeah. was Ben Sheets. <laughs> ben Sheets and uh, Barry Zito. Those they guys, call, could... they call me Ben Sheets when I'm in the NBA. But you're printed. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it'll be interesting. I mean, it's like a 20 mile per hour difference between the curveball and the fastball, which is major, okay. which like, you know, yeah, it's a big velocity difference, but I feel like a guy like that second time through the order, you know, I, I don't think the Astros are going to have a lot of trouble with him, but we'll see. I mean, there's a lot okay. of guys today that like we really have not seen a lot of. Um, it's, mm-hmm. it's really interesting. There's someone mentioned in the discord. I think there's like one pitcher on this main slate that had an ADP in the dinger. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's that time of, uh, the cycle in rotations where like everything's still lining up and we don't have like stars and scrubs on the same slate. We just have stars or scrubs. Like that's kind of how, how it's going so far. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it'll, it'll shake up as we get further along in the season, but it's kind of fun. It's a, it's a it's a fun main slate. All right, let's uh let's jump into the main slate in one second here. There's one last thing I wanted to bring up, Nez, when we were doing the shout outs and stuff. I know you did it on the behind the paywall one there, and I thought it was really sharp. I just wanted to reset it for everyone um who is a non badged up uh, member though, because I I thought I thought it was really really astute of you to point out. We had a three way um dupe for first place on opening day. And if this was the hoop streets, that means they all had the same lineup. But in MLB, it just shows you the value of the scrolls, the value of the contrarian plays, the value of um, leverage, how deep the player pool is every single night, because we had three completely unique lineups all tie each other here. So just, you know, different ways to arrive at the same destination on a given night. Um, Shane Bieber, who was the highest scoring pitcher on the slate, and then a 3-2 lineup of some of the chalky stacks, the chalky stacks being Cincinnati and Arizona that night. 
Then we had a Pablo Lopez team, so you didn't even need the highest scoring pitcher on the slate there. And then we had a whole bunch of one-offs that included a swap in and included Bobby Witt going against his own pitcher. And then Chipsy comes in here. Uh, again, Pablo Lopez with Bobby Witt going against his own pitcher there. And then two of the chalky stacks as 2-2-1 two, two, build there. So just, man, it gives everybody hope in the MLB streets that you can find a way to get there. And you don't just need, hey, Zion in the third round who had 65 points or your lineups are dead on a given night. Yeah, it's such a different game. It could not be more different from hoops. It it, it just mm-hmm. it just simply couldn't be a more different game. Um, I thought this was awesome. Like like you said, it just illustrates what like I like. It's so great when you have something like this to kind of illustrate the point of like you know we got we got a lot of questions. Like I love everybody like wanting to know more about baseball dailies, and a lot of mm-hmm. questions were like what like what's the optimal build? What's the optimal stack? And it's almost like the dead even as far as like 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 it's so evenly spread out as far as what is like the best and what's like the most winningest way to Mm -hmm. build these lineups i mean there really is not one answer and this is the perfect way to kind of show that and and you know in one night it was cool yeah very much so man i i I, it's it's something i internally struggle with like every single day because it's like you know you could do some of the upper echelon one ones to start and then a three-man stack to close or should I be getting contrarian with a starter that nobody else is playing or should I be vaulting up that ace because I think there's a huge differentiation between that one pitcher and the rest of the slate every single slate is its own unique beast to attack and I mean you see that in what I did in this morning's slate I had 15 entries there no cubs or I think I did cubs once by accident to be honest because I misclicked um but no rockies no braves no White Sox because I was like, there's weather in those games. There's not weather in the other games. This gives me two outs. It could either be cut short, it could be rained out, or they could just flop and I'm overexposed to the other two spots. And it's just like, is fading Braves against uh, uh, um, Chris Flexen a good idea? Absolutely not. Is it a way to win potentially if things break in my favor? Maybe. <laughs> so hey, we'll see. You're off to a good start. Uh, hit list in the top of the first. Yeah, and- I'm right. That's zeros. Yep. Yep. They're struggling. <laughs> uh, I love this. Chips, you don't show my team as I just have it on the screen for the last five minutes now that he's still not over stacking Bobby Witt against Pablo. <laughs> What is his? A- is- I never noticed his his avatar. What is that's that just looks like a that looks like a beautiful Caribbean beach. That looks like Vancouver. <laughs> that looks like you in a in a what if uh, Bobby Witt and Kyle Isbell is who you need in a slate type of type of post. <laughs> yeah, I that did, is exactly what it looks like. To be I had to double check that that wasn't a, 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 a um, picture that you've posted before. Um, guys, do us a favor. We got 56 of us hanging out right now. Uh, hit that like, that subscribe, that notification. We will be bringing at least three more shows to you this week, including a very special Tuesday show tomorrow. Um, I think it's locked in stone. Should we say it, Nez? I, I know, right? It's like, do we like, do we just say it? Uh, I, I think it's happening, right? It's like, let's just say it and manifest it. A it's crossover. Ha- it's happening, right? It's, like, all right. Crossover show. Badge bros, baseball is dead. Way bigger than us, way bigger. Um, uh, Jared Carabas is going to join us tomorrow to, I'm not sure if it's going to be his first ever daily draft. I think it will be. Okay, cool. So it's going to be his very first ever uh, daily draft on Underdog because he was ineligible to play up until, you know, converting uh, from the redacted platform to the platform of the people and joining us here. So he's going to come on, rip a draft with with us there. Um, then obviously Pete on Wednesday, often on the clock. Um, I've reached out to uh, Easy. Easy, if you guys are not following, um, he has, let me get the easy DFS dot XYZ. Um, he has been doing some great baseball stuff um, on his website there, putting some amazing sheets together break them off a couple bucks. They are well worth it if you were playing in these daily streets. And I want to have him come on and walk us through it. So hopefully sometime later in this week or early next week, 
And then, of course, next week on Wednesday, we got T-Box coming back for the 100-day smoke-free, 100K rake-free. So tons of fun stuff coming in the, the next uh, week or so uh, for us. And really excited about that. Uh, Nez, should we start with the 101 location uh, for Baseball Dailies here? NezTakes.com. You're too kind. I went with a, uh, I went out on a limb with the cover boy today. Uh, I figured, <laughs> you know, little, little Juan Soto. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. This, this new, this new guy in pinstripes here. Um, <laughs> laughing at Chip's comment. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I tried to give like a little, like write up for each of the uh, pitchers that we like really haven't seen a lot mm. of today. Uh, so I talked about, you know, uh, boy, Joe Boyle for the athletics, uh, Keaton Wynn, uh, all these guys. So, uh, nice. yeah, go ahead and, uh, check this out. If that, if that's your thing, give me a, give me a little Coles note nugget. Uh, I guess you guys use spark notes in the States there in high school. Cool. Mine was Coles notes, North border. Um, give me, give me a little, uh, a tidbit insight on, uh, you know, one or two of those guys. Uh, Joe Boyle got some love in the, um, season long streets wrapping up spring training had a nice spring and then once they knew he was going to have a, a rotation spot and mason miller was going to the bullpen blah blah blah. he got a little bit of love i'm not sure if he went drafted in the dinger at all but uh conceivably in the player pool um yeah any 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 thoughts on boyle and or anyone else he wrote up yeah so uh boyle is interesting because he's he's massive six six mm -hmm. seven um and he throws gas uh, he's nice. got a 90, his fastball average is 98 and he, and he pairs it with a slider. So he kind of has like that, like fastball slider, you know, meta that we're seeing of that two of those two pitch mixes, especially whenever okay. the fastball is like dirty, which it is. Uh, but the thing is, is like, he doesn't really, at least last season, like he had a, a really good ERA to show for his starts, but from what I saw, didn't really know what, like where the ball was going. It just like. You know, it was a small sample. Uh, he started three okay. games, uh, 16 innings pitch, 15 strikeouts, 0.8 whip, 1.7 ERA. So great, great results. Nice. But um, peripherals kind of indicate that, yeah, like that he was he was running pure. But he has the ability to be like a really good starter, I think. Uh, I just mm -hmm. I think it's going to come with some major ups and downs. Uh, so it, he's, he's got he's got a good test here against the Red Sox. Like the Red Sox say what you will. They're not they're not bad. Uh, so okay. Joe Boyle is interesting. If he can command the, the slider as like an out pitch, um, then, then he's going to be really good. But there's, you know, times where he's got counts where he should be throwing a slider or at least last year to, as an out pitch. And like just didn't trust it. And was just like, I'm just going to throw gas. And all he did was just pump the fastball. And then Keaton Mitch, Keaton Wynn is interesting. Mm -hmm. He's like their number 13 overall prospect for the Giants. He's fastball splitter. Uh, okay. So I'm really excited to see him. He he throws pretty hard as well. Uh, so I'm excited to see, like, because you don't get a lot of, like, fastball splitter pitchers. You know, I mean, it's, a, no, you yeah. know, splitters can be effective when they're done well. So I think we could see, like, a pretty nice start. For, I'm, I'm taking Dodgers a lot, but I think if Keaton Wynn has the splitter working, like, he could he could give the Dodgers fits. But we'll we'll, we'll have to see. These guys are, are intriguing, though. Okay. Yeah, no, I like uh, like the breakdown um, thus far. Then a um, lot of pitchers' parks on the slate. I think uh, Yankees, D-backs, Dodgers are going to be the three chalk stacks. Oh, Astros, Astros as well. Yeah, like far and away um, okay. the the chalkiest stacks. And then we don't know if we're going to get Boba Shet, but uh, you know, Ronel Blanco is not anybody to be afraid of. And uh, you know, we we just got to figure out. Pichette's in kind of helps with with the builds there, but uh, I like Guerrero today too. Okay, um, Justin Turner had a really nice day yesterday and is outfield eligible on our site. If Bobichet doesn't go, I imagine he hits in the three hole. Yeah, and that's a fun one, two, three with uh, yeah. Spring, Vlad, and and, and Turner, uh, and, and you know with the Crawford boxes in left field there. Yeah, and then uh, and then uh, maybe you could go a little Alejandro Kirk as well there, like just. You know. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're a sneaky stack. People are not going out of their way to get 
Blue Jays when you have like all these studs staring you at the top. What you know, I mean, it's Jordan, all the Dodgers, Judge, mm-hmm. Soto. I mean, all these studs just looking at you in the face. It's kind of hard to get away from that. And and the the Blue Jays are a nice way to kind of deviate. Okay. I like that. Um, some of the mispriced guys you have noticed via ADP yet. One that jumped out to me this morning was Max Muncy. Um, just in terms of stacking Dodgers and whatnot, this you, you you sometimes get this on the site where a guy a was struggling a little bit in quotations. He he hit a couple balls to the warning track. Actually, two of them over the weekend. Uh, I noticed. I think one was Friday night and one was Saturday. But you do get this where a guy doesn't play yesterday, and as a result, he just kind of falls out of favor in people's minds and whatnot. Um, I'm not the biggest Muncie guy in the world, nor are you, but we know the power is there. So um, just was one that jumped out to me as kind of like buried. Uh, anyone else that jumped out to you initially that was, you know, buried? Well, I think the, you know, we, we love Reese Olsen. Right. Reese Olsen mm-hmm. had himself a really nice 2023, like came out and was like a sneaky little, you know, good starter. Dare we say, for, dare we say pesky? Oh, he's pesky. You, you know, played for the peskiest team in, in the league, the the, the <laughs> Tigers. Um, Mets, though, I, I think that the top of the Mets order is still like a fun team to get to if they're not facing like mm. a good pitcher. And Reese Olsen is fine. I don't think we can call him like certified good. And right. these Mets are really, really cheap. Uh, and, you know, you can stack them any which way that you would like. And uh, it, it's going to be a lesser stacked team today. So I like them as like a, as a nice leverage spot. Uh, Alonzo is live to go yard no matter who's on the mound, no matter where he's playing. It doesn't mm-hmm. really matter. Yeah, no, I like that show for sure. They are definitely going. I mean, you'll see this as like recency bias creeps in the teams that basically scored no runs over the last like three or four days, uh, the Cardinals, the Mets, the, you know, we know these lineups are good. We know these players are good. They just haven't shown it yet. So we instantly vault the others over them. That being said, the, the fact, the, the matter on this slate is you got Yankees, Astros and Dodgers, and those guys are, you know, they're always going to be at the top of ADP. Very interesting. Um, very interesting slate both this morning and today that it's like obvious in quotations that like who the best plays are and all the ownership is consolidating around the obvious. Um, but we just go as far back as yesterday and we look at the hundred dollar contest and few, few took it down with a five man Royal stack. Yep. One of those, one of those, uh, one of those slates. I mean, how else are you going to get to Kyle Isbell? Yeah, you know, like like you're just not. That's what we we talked about this at nauseum last season. That is part mm-hmm. of the benefit of the onslaught is like you get the correlation plus you get the uniqueness. That's we talked about this nonstop. I mean, I am never in my life drafting Kyle Isbell like as a one off. Right. Like it's just not how I'm going to play these games. But if you do, and you get mm-hmm. you know, and and then you get wit as well with his 29 points, you're gonna crush. Yeah. Same thing, same thing to, to, uh, same thing to, uh, Hassan Kim yesterday, because if you're going, if you're building three twos or you're building four ones, even you're probably drafting four other Padres over him, you know, maybe you're mixing him in, but it's going to be Tatis Machado, Xander, and then flip a coin between Kim and Cronenworth. And you probably go with the hand and disadvantage of Cronenworth yesterday. So as much Mm -hmm. as you know, we like to poo poo and and uh, and uh, piss on uh, the five mans and the four ones and this sort of thing. There's inherent strategy to getting the, these contrarian pieces that you won't get to any other way. Right here, the yeah, thing- Troy in the chat here saying came in fourth with five royals. Yes, he did. You know? Yeah, I saw that. The thing is, though, if you look, a lot of people are starting to do this where they are adding space in their portfolios to onslaught like every team so right you sort of have to like be smart about how you do it because chances are you're gonna dupe if you Mm -hmm. are you know on slotting a team like not everybody but like there's at least like three or four people that are also doing that so 
I mean, nothing wrong with splitting for like a few hundred. If, if you know, that'll help break you even. But in my opinion, I think it's, I think it's, it's good to be smart about it and try to diversify how you are on slotting. In my opinion, like it. Yep. No good shouts there. Um, Brett boy, why weren't you a member already? No, I'm just busting your balls. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining up, bro. Appreciate that a lot. Yeah, Easy brings up a really good point here, man. The hardest thing about the three twos is forcing yourself to take the back end of stacks. It's easier to do in lineups like the Rangers or uh, the Dodgers because, like, for instance, yesterday, I did a lot of uh, Tay Oscar. Uh, I thought Will Smith was going to play. I was very shocked that Will Smith didn't. Um, oh. I no, Not on you, a Sunday, on, baby. Yeah, I, I understood that yeah. aspect i would normally be on that but when it was versa lefty and it was sunday night baseball first week i kind of overthought it and was yeah. like okay muncie will sit and then one of the left-handed outfielders would sit whether it be hayward or something like that i didn't think they put kiki at third base anyways well um it's not that okay whatever who cares but that's uh, i just pivoted i just pivoted to chris taylor after anyways but just doing like chris taylor and tay oscar it feels a lot better than doing like Nelson Velasquez and Kyle Isbell, for instance, because, you know, when you're building that three, two, you're forcing yourself to the fourth and fifth best hitters on the Dodgers. But those players feel in entirely more comfy to click than than Isbell or something. And the same thing was true with this morning slate, like, you know, getting to nationals. Well, everybody in their dog is getting to nationals by doing CJ Abrams and Lane Thomas. Right. It's really hard to click on. Joey Manessis or Joey Gallo, lefty, lefty, like stuff like that. Right. So yeah. I was doing a lot of Kilbert Ruiz and uh, just, you know, little left, Kil lefty killer. What do you call him? Kilbert? What I, yeah. Kilbert. He's killing lefties. Lefty killer. <laughs> Kilbert go. Ruiz. It's safe. Uh, I had <laughs> a, you. I had a quite a few by quite a few. I probably mean like four uh, national stacks yesterday uh, with the righty mm. on the mound with, um with, with Rosario and Gallo. Uh, I was really, I was really going for it, and, and you know, and with in the with against the Reds there, I was, uh, it it, it almost it almost got home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they were winning that ball game for the majority of it. It was like pretty high scoring ball game when it was all said and done, but not enough to not enough to matter compared to what the Royals did to Bailey Ober. Are we concerned about Bailey Ober now? One of everybody's favorite kind of like mid range sleeper this year. Gotta wonder. Gotta wonder. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the Royals are just uh, maybe the Royals are hashtag good. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm a little scared for sure. I mean, that's not that's not the start you want. No, absolutely not. Um, I'm gonna bring up uh, lineups here just for a second. There, Nez. Uh, interesting. We still don't have the Royals lineup for the early slate. Okay. Wait, am I? Yeah, had a right day. Year. yeah, that's what I was looking at. I was like, this has to be the right day, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. All the 7-10 games. Yeah, weird slate because, like, we got games that are separated by, like, 20 minutes, but they're on the early versus the late. So, yep. yeah, just a just a, a weird one to, to fill through. What would you think of the, the 20 max today? Dude, I, I was very happy with it. Um, you yeah. know, I like that we're like experimenting with how to, how to like parse these, these slates out. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was surprised that it filled as fast as it did, but like, that's a very, that's a very good sign that like, if you limit, you know, us to 20 entries and it can, mm -hmm. and it'll still fill that fast. Uh, that's a great sign. And at a $7 price point too, I think is like really, really good. I think that that's awesome. It's a way to beef up the prize pool while, you know, cutting down the volume it takes because auto drafting baseball is like so hard and like it's, it's at the detriment to your ROI in my opinion um, mm -hmm. to auto draft baseball. It's so much better to actually be in there and draft, but that takes a lot of time, you know, as we right. know, like it, it's, that's not cheap. So I love the $7 price point, love the 20 max. Um, and, and I thought the, the prize pools today were, were appropriate. Really liked the way that, that uh, everything was laid out. Uh, hopefully we can get, the, all these contests like filled and like well before mm -hmm. lock that way we can you know try to play see see how big we can get uh gotta yeah. fill them first you know we gotta gotta earn it 
Um, but I got yeah, no, no, I got no, uh, no doubts that, that it'll all get filled. Yeah. I like that show. Yeah. I really like the structure as well. Yeah. Chip, I almost had the same thing. I was looking in bed there and it was like 80%. And I was like, Holy fuck. I just got to get in here and do, do as many as I can really quickly there. Yeah. I like that. I like, I mean, we've talked about it in the discord a little bit more and I love that, you know, new me hope, et cetera, are experimenting with stuff. Like for me, the less is more a little bit stuff. Uh, I'll be quite candid. I didn't like the triple play yesterday where it was like three ten dollar ones but then only five places paid out so i, I really like that one i didn't even I yeah i was even in there yeah i really like the the structure of today's with the 12 dollar price point more uh obviously i'm more like come on let's get this thing up to 25 30 50 uh-huh. like something like that but like yeah I, I i like that and i like that we get the single entry there i think the dream Daytime Diamond fills more quickly, I think, than the main slate does. Like, just anecdotally, does that feel true to you? Well, yeah, because it's like this slate starts before the other one. Time right. is like a very limited resource when drafting baseball. You're 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 going to draft the whatever locks first first. Mm-hmm. So all the liquidity like funnels into that first contest. Um, So I think it makes sense to do it how it was laid out today, where it's like the main slate is the main slate. That is where the biggest prize is. Ultimately, I think for us as players, we want the biggest like possible prize pool in one contest. So Mm. making the earlier slate like intentionally smaller, I think will will help with that. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, and then that way, like there is it it helps with the liquidity because now it's not just automatically going for whatever locks first. You can opt to put your time and resources into a bigger contest if that's what you would prefer to do. And the uh, the the first pitch times this season are going to kind of be a little wonky this season. Um, Like that's 640 uh, Eastern first pitch time. You know Mm -hmm. how like. It like think like last season, years prior, these East Coast teams started first pitch early and then they eventually adjusted to like seven. That's like not the case anymore. They are like pitching, they're starting first pitch before seven Eastern, like year okay. round. So it's going to be like an interesting uh slate dynamic every every single slate. So it'll be interesting to see what they what they end up doing and how and, and how that's handled. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I I like where we're at. I think the biggest, though, I think the biggest one zero one takeaway thus far is we like a main to be a main. So there's one that's distinctly bigger and different than the other one. And for me, the other one would be I don't like overlap in games. So I really like what they did today and yesterday, where you know there's no overlap in the two distinctly different contests. I don't want to be drafting Braves again on the second one and the first one, you know, yeah. I like that there's no overlap in games. A hundred percent. That is, that okay. is so awesome. Uh, Cause it's very, it's not often that you get a slate of like appropriate uh, or good size in baseball. They're always like huge unless it's like mm-hmm. a third, unless it's like a Thursday game or a, you know, or, or, or a Monday game or Monday slate, something like that. So uh, the, the splitting is, is helpful with that. Once we get into like the full swing of the season, uh, it'll be interesting to see what what the contests end up looking like uh, then. But, you know, it, it's still early. The schedule is still a little weird. You know, like we have yeah. early games today. So, uh, you know, I, I've got I've got hope. Things things are going to go well for us because we're going to fill these contests. Liquidity is going to be strong and, uh, you know, we're, we'll, we'll get rewarded. No question. Yeah, extremely bullish on baseball, just in a vacuum. Even yesterday's uh, main contest after, you know, we're talking Easter Sunday, people with families, blah, blah, blah. I said it in the Discord, like defending Numi's structure. I was like, this is a pretty great structure on any other Sunday. It might not fill today just because it, it, it ended up getting to like 75, almost 80%. But I was like, it might not fill today just because it's Easter Sunday and people are with families and stuff. But going forward, I thought that was a really good way of breaking up a daytime Sunday uh, that, you know, no overlap, too distinctly different like that. So I wouldn't have a takeaway from yesterday overlaying a little bit other than, oh, it doesn't matter. Turn the page. Next Sunday will be completely different. Yeah, Sundays are Sundays are tough um, because like you if if they're like the same like prize pools, if they're both 20, like. I'm going to draft the one that locks first because I want to get it. And it's like really, really hard to max 
you know, mm-hmm. that unless you're like, you know, onslaughting and, and auto drafting. And then you had like another like hour or two to try to cram as many as you could in the right. second one. So that was just like it was like a time constraint thing. Like I just simply didn't have like enough time to to max. But Sundays, you know, Sundays are always going to kind of have that that sort of challenge in the schedule. Like it was just a Sunday thing and it was Easter on top of it. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, so maybe Sunday Sunday going forward because the draft window is longer for the second one. You cut the first one in half and play it as smaller and then push sort bigger. Of like today's structure second. a little bit, right? Like like you do yeah. a seven dollar, thirty max, twenty max, something like that. Um, and then that way, like, you know, you get your you get your entries in and then you can begin to start to draft the other contests, whereas it's you're incentivized to draft as much as you can that that first contest because it's 100 something max you know you're you just keep keep going but if you have the cap and then it's like okay now 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 you are funneled into the main slate it, it would help with the liquidity in my opinion um but you know think it's early in the season and we've had some the big, bigger prize pools than we could have that we've ever had than in, mm-hmm. in baseball so think things are things are in a good spot you know don't 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 get misconstrued we, we it, it's fun to talk about the structures it's fun to talk about these things you know there, it's it's Things are in a really good spot. Yeah, uh, I'm in lockstep with Easy. I really like today's lobby. The only thing I would yep. change is the twelve dollar be twenty five dollar and and be a little bit smaller in terms of total entries, but higher price point. Um, Run good, Rick. Asking you ever taking? Uh, yeah, weather is the one zero one of taking into account for fading games. If you just look what I did, uh, I posted it earlier. I one hundred percent faded Braves today. 100% faded White Sox faded Cubs as well and Cubs and Rockies as well just for the off chance that weather came in or if they flopped I created a little bit of leverage uh that way as well so yeah I mean weather is the 101 uh starting point for every slate behind nestakes.com <laughs> I put the weather in uh, there, so it kind of yeah. kind of all in one for you um, all right, Nez, uh, any notes about literally any lineup on the slate that you want to, uh, bring to people's attention at all? I will, I, I, I have, I have a couple, um, Astros are sticking with this Jordan and Tucker at the two, three, which we love to see. We pinpointed the fact that we think Justin Tucker or, or Justin Tucker, Justin Turner will hit third. If Boba Chet is out, they currently have him in there. Um, Versa righty. We'll see Jock Peterson slot into the fifth hole. Those days he will always be quote unquote underpriced. Uh, will Brennan has been hitting fifth for uh, Cleveland uh, when they are facing both righty and left or sorry, both right or only righty. So just something of, of note there that I paid attention to. Uh, Brennan Donovan has led off every single day thus far um for the cardinals so just looking at your stacks there uh anything else lineup wise no nothing really uh okay. i think this dude matt waldron for the padres is you know a bit of a blow up risk cardinals have not really looked good <laughs> yet this season so no one's really on it but i think it's a combination of you know you can the cardinals are going to have good days and mm-hmm. I think Matt Waldron is a nice place to start for them to have a good day. So I'm doing, doing some Cardinal stacks as a, as something sneaky. Um, and, and like you mentioned, Donovan lead off Gorman lefty as well there. Uh, we'll see where Jordan Walker is hitting in the lineup. He's looked bad. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Jordan Walker's been a little bit buried. Uh, I doubt Victor Scott's in the player pool yet. Is he? I didn't know. He is actually. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. So I saw Somebody mentioned there was a knuckleballer, and then so yeah, I guess Wal- it's Waldron, huh? I did not realize that. Waldron's converted. Waldron okay. wasn't always a knuckleballer. Interesting. Okay, yeah. I didn't. So I, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Maybe not the. Sp- I'm like. Yeah, I'm. I'm fairly certain he is. Um. Hmm. I'm looking for it right now. Maybe he isn't fully converted. Maybe he's always had the knuckleball in his back pocket. He's he's got a full arsenal. He throws it about yeah 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 six percent of the time. It looks like 
Yeah, he's not Tim Wakefield. He's like he uses it in lieu of a changeup. I think that's crazy. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I mean his numbers. All I was looking at were his like past numbers, and they didn't look good. So we'll we'll <laughs> see. Now that he's got the knuckleball going in there. Uh, I'll have to uh, think twice. Do you know the golden rule about hitting a knuckleballer? Mm-mm. If it's high, let it fly. If it's low, let it go. <laughs> that was the the anecdotal. Uh, thing you'd always say when you were facing Wakefield. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, one other thing, uh, lineup wise, we saw Astori Ruiz has sat every single day against a righty thus far, and then he's led off versus lefty, and then he led off yesterday against Carlos Carrasco and had a really good uh, game. So I hope they're just doing some funky stuff. And now it's a story where we is back at the top of that lineup because I think they're far more dynamic and they showed it yesterday uh, with that. But uh, yeah, just of note for whatever reason on this lineup, they have no Rooker. So I guess they're the athletics are annoying as shit. Like, yeah, we we have no idea what, what they're doing. They don't have any idea what they're doing. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Like, <laughs> what is Looking what buttons. is going on? Yeah, it's so it's so annoying. Um, on that on that on the uh, Dodgers game with the Giants, mm-hmm. you know, we're gonna see the righty up against our boy James Paxton. Yeah, James Paxton, sneaky sneaky like top three pitcher today uh, against the Giants. Who like the Giants are fine, and yeah, they've got righties. I'm excited to get to Paxton today on, on a slate that's this gross at pitcher. Yeah. I, I I mean, I'll echo that. I've always been a Paxton guy, like mid nineties, fastball, nice back foot slider. He mixes in the change up primarily to righties away. Um, Yeah. I mean, they, they gave him, they didn't give him the bag, but they give him some good money. And when Dodgers invest in pitching, it's kind of like when Rays invest in pitching, right? Where it's like, I'm ready to see what this guy can do. Hey, speaking of Dodgers pitching, Man, Gavin Stone looked freaking nice on... Was that yesterday or the day before? Yesterday, I think. Yeah, man. Struck out the side in the first inning, all on the changeup. We talked about it at the end of draft season there where we took him in a dinger or two where Mm -hmm. it was like, man, he had better... He had better um, AAA numbers than Bobby Miller did. And then last year, he was hampered by a toe injury and something else on his finger. And then, man, Gavin Stone might be a dude this year. Yeah, that was a good call. Yeah, I'm excited to to see that. But yeah, I like the Paxton shout for sure. Um, rank your your starters for me today. Uh, I didn't scroll all the way down on Nez takes there. Are you McKenzie over Hawk, or are you just treating Tanner Hawk as like at Oakland is just the smash spot of all smash spots? I'm going McKenzie against your. Uh, your Mariners okay. uh, 101 and then and then Tanner um, okay. Paxton uh, Manaya and then um, from here it's like you're wow. not concerned that Manaya cut off all his hair I am concerned there's no aura <laughs> there anymore um, <laughs> yeah but Tigers when Tigers face a lefty like they are just not the same team they're just they're no just they're not that the, lefties are their kryptonite um, yeah low key uh, the, the, the props and projections on Hancock aren't, aren't fantastic. Mm-hmm. Hancock at a home park against, against, uh, the guardians. If you're just looking for someone that, that probably won't kill you. I like Hancock against the guardians tonight. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Emerson, I, I've, I've seen him pitch once, I think for like Everett back in the day, like highly touted prospect. He was a first round pick out of the sec. Um, yeah, I don't know a ton about his his pitch mix, to be honest. It's not, like, overwhelming, but uh-huh. he is a Mariner, and he's surrounded by other good pitching, so he's going to get the transitive property bump. Uh, yeah. But but he's at home against the Guardians, and, you know, chances are Guardians are not going to, you know, send a guy to his grave, famous last words. But, um, you know, I, he's sneaky, man. As you can tell by ADP, I mean, it's meaningless, but he's not getting taken. So mm-hmm. I, 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 I've been mixing him in. Okay. I like it, man. Why not? 
And, and I think they have reason to let him go like at least five. Like, it, I don't know. We get to these slates where like we're dealing with like fourth and fifth starters and there's guys that like, I don't know, will they have a long enough leash, right? Like I'm not touching Ryan Nelson. Um, Gil, I'm probably not touching as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like at least if I go the Kyle Gibson, what's up? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, oh, I just found out uh, it's pronounced heel for Luis. Luis heel. Really? Yeah, because it's you know soft G and you know it's oh. the, the E for the I. Uh, wow. while I was do- doing my research, so yeah, the yeah. Luis you know. heel. I, I yeah had no idea. Sorry. Yeah, I had no idea either. Um, the the Kyle Gibson one is interesting for me because it's like at least we know he's professional preacher. He's stretched out. If he's going good, they'll let him go six or seven. And it's so fa- it's so hard to find quality starts and wins this early in the season, unless you're dealing with like the top three pitchers on a slate. So just one that I wanted to like point out that like, yeah, that's a good hey, call. at least it's a good park. At least he's a professional ass pitcher and at least he's stretched out. So yep. I don't know. Gibson might be one for me. Uh, we're getting a question about like potential, like career splits versus teams. Like they just matter. Absolutely. Zero percent. Like it yeah. does not matter at all. It's purely yeah, it's not, not a dunk, not a dunk. It's just, it's just the no. truth. Like just let us, let us yeah. tell you that stuff does not matter. Yeah. Just noise in, in splits like that. Um, there's like, there's some merit to like guys who pitch well in certain parks and whatever, but like Tristan McKenzie's probably faced this Mariners team like three times in his life. And yeah. they were probably just like, you know, wind was blowing out one day and certain lineups were not the same as other lineups that he faced. And just right. uh, don't read into too much into those ones. It's just, there's a lot of noise. Um, exactly. I will point out uh, some other potential lineup shifts were, uh, we said um, Detroit is not the same team versus lefty just because, you know, some of the power of Kerry Carpenter is probably likely to sit today and um you know kind of neutralizes riley green in the middle of that lineup though he will still play but it does bring into uh play maybe some matt veerling some mark canna uh some jake rogers you know how, who i love my jake rogers and uh some andy abanias so some scroll the f down guys who are you know quote unquote lefty killers not to the extent in which patrick wisdom or jake berger is but just some guys that draw in against left-handed pitching that are in your player pool and in consideration today. Um, any other names you want to throw out, Nez, or should we um, rip some drafts here? Uh, no, I think we are. I think we're good to start ripping. All right. Let's do it, my friend. All right. We are going to hop in. Oh, and we got that soft toss double entry today. That's kind of fun. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, we're going to hop in shot Monday. There we go. Boom. One more spots. Mark Canna revenge game too. People forget. Oh, buddy. <laughs> you tempt me with a Mark Canna good time. That Tigers onslaught feels like a, like a slate breaking combo there. It's just one of those, yeah, one yeah. of those teams. Kind of feels like Royals yesterday, right? Where mm-hmm. It's like, nobody's going to do it, but like could matter. Exactly. That's how it always feels. It's like, am I really going to pass up? Like this one through 12 is just like ridiculous today. And it's like, am I going to really pass up on these guys to take Andy Abanez with my first pick? Yeah, of course I am. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, man. Um, oh, Braves fate is going good so far. They're up one nothing. Yeah, it was uh, who else? It wasn't a homer, but Darnold, of course, with the uh, with the run, because yeah, he's a yeah, and now he's getting all these ABs with uh, uh, Murphy. John hurt. Murphy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's going to be a click for us uh, all all season. Yeah, unfortunate to see Sean Murphy get hurt there. Yeah, yeah, you never want that. Yeah, eerily similar to uh, last season. Not the, injury, the same injury or whatever. No, no, not the not – the, I actually, I, I, don't, I shouldn't say no because I don't actually know. Just the fact that, like, you know – guy gets hurt early in the year that we thought was going to have some sneaky value hitting fourth or fifth every day kind of deal get down it won't <laughs> Jan Mankata with a double yeah how about that uh 
Shota Imanaga All right. with, a, with a hot start, too. Oh, you're on the Who? clock. Yeah, I'm on the clock here, Nez. Do you have a lean at the front end of draft boards? I'm leaning Otani today. I like Otani today. Okay. He's due. How do you like that oh, for analysis? As the kids are saying, he is due. He's super due. All right. Dodgers are just like it. insane. Like, can they, can we get them like a, a good matchup, please? Like uh, uh, getting the Cardinals for their first series, like not a single good pitcher in that rotation. Now they got the giants who, I mean, the giants have good pitchers, but to start off with Keaton, uh, win hell Keaton win. Yeah. Like, yeah. Damn. That's all right. They'll get Logan Webb tomorrow and we'll see what happens. That's right. Yeah. Logan Webb's yeah. going to put a stop to all this noise. I'm just tired of the chalk so. Dodgers. Tired of so. Um, <laughs> I love this. Who take kill beast tigers on slot open a can of woo fast on the mats. That's love great. That. Love that one there. Oh, what do we got here? T box. What's good, man. Look forward to seeing you next Wednesday on the program for the, 100K rake free NBA tournament looks like Brewers Pirates at the top of the NL Central in September. You already know, baby. Yeah. Um, Devers had a had a couple days off there, or one day off. One day off, came back there. Yeah, that was weird. Glad he's okay. Yeah, a little, little tweak in his back or something like that. Did you see the Bryce Harper one? I did not. No, dude, he went. Ass over tea kettle into the dugout, oh, yeah. full sprint into the railing, and he wasn't even close to the ball. It must have hit like the netting. I think it hit high. the netting, but it looked hilarious. Yeah, but it, it looked like so bad. It looked ten feet behind him. It was so funny. All right, Nezzy, what do you say we start scrolling? Yeah, let's just let's just go. Okay, uh, you said Tristan McKenzie's your favorite pitcher on the slate today. Yeah, I mean it's not by like a lot, but he is my favorite pitcher today. Yeah. All right. I think he offers the most strikeout upside. Mariners have been striking out a lot. That's good. That's a good nugget. I think he, yeah, he has like that, just that combo of strikeout upside plus ability to not get hit hard. Or, or if he does, mm-hmm. you know, not sacrifice a ton of earned runs. It's okay to just like get your pitcher out of the way when we know we're going to scroll. You know, it's like, who, who cares? Um, choose your own adventure here, Nez. Do you want to build a 3-2, a 4-1, a uh, 1-1-3? I have, I have ideas for all of it to do in a contrarian fashion. Let's, um, hmm. Do you want to do, add like one more Dodger and then, right. um, and then stack elsewhere? Let's add Max Muncy. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. All right. Max Muncy or Will Smith? Who do you prefer today? Uh, I prefer Will Smith, but Max Muncy's a lefty, and he's going to be more unique. So he counts as a stack and a scroll. It's a you know, two birds one right. stone. Yeah, he came off the bench yesterday to homer too. So you know, that was a s- sick little bat flip he did. He was pumped for that one. Go get it out of the ocean. <laughs> so after this, um, how, do you want to scroll far? You want to really get crazy or no? Uh, yeah, man. Let's get let's get really crazy. I was let me pitch you let me pitch you the two scroll the f down three mans that I wanted to do. I wanted to do cards or I wanted to do um um Detroit. I wanted to do Tigers, and I think cards is better as a three infield scroll because it's unless we took Alec Burleson with this. Not in love with Jordan Walker right now. Um, that that bad spring has carried over for him with a lot of swing and miss. Those were going to be my two suggestions, but I'm open to hearing whatever you want. I was going to suggest um, athletics. All right, let's do it. Who do you think? Double bubble. Athletics is the hardest one to do. It I is. think I think Geloff is for sure going to hit third, so he we probably start with him. Yeah, I'd start with start with the uh, Zach. Did I spell it wrong? Oh no, we missed it. We oh, missed it. We no, missed no, it. no, 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 no. Now you got it. You got it. You have the unreal, dude. The buffer there is just crazy. Just OP. There you got was lucky. No way. Zach with a K. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so the outfield is tough for uh, for Oakland, but... Uh, I think they really think. like J.J. Boudet. Like, they I think did, yeah. We were doing those Noda stacks and stuff in the dinger, and I kept saying Boudet over Rooker or something like that, and mm-hmm. everybody's like, you're an idiot, but I, I think they like him more. Yeah, I mean, he was a... He was expected to be a pretty damn good baseball player. Uh, and mm-hmm. he wasn't, and he, and he hasn't been bad. He walks a lot. Uh, hasn't walked yet this season, but he walks a lot. And his, and his, his K's are, are, you know, held mm-hmm. at bay. I like, I like, you like, I like Blade. Okay. And then, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a Noda guy. Um, yeah. I think there's a chance Noda, we've seen him lead off once this year. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm, I I mean they have a different lineup like every single day, so I don't remember. Right, yeah. It is tough. Actually, Loki um hate the fact that on the new Rotors Roto Grinders website, you can't go back or forward on Really? Um Yeah. To see starting lineups? Yeah. You Damn. can just see day of. Gotta find a new resource for that, for the just to check mm-hmm. lineups. Okay. Noda potentially. Yeah. Um, or JD Davis, he hits every day for them. Yeah, man. Okay. So JD Davis, very interesting story this year. He he homered twice thus far. I think they were both in the same game, question mark. But like his knock was always like, we don't know where to play him on defense because he's not a good enough defender to play third base kind of deal it was low-key like the the christopher morrell one but um you know obviously not as good a hitter but he once upon a time man like he was a pretty big prospect for the mets and like he drew like capital and stuff anyways he low-key got screwed out of six million dollars this year did you know that oh i know the giants did him super dirty yeah so they did him like yeah they did him really dirty and then Anyways, it's it's good to see him back on a big league team and like playing, but like playing every day too, because I do think he's deserved it. Let's rip one more of those, Ines. Yeah. I'm laughing at Copper's comment here. He said Mets should bring up Oscar De La Cruz from the minors to pitch against the Dodgers so they have to sit Will Smith. And I'm and I'm reading this. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, Will Smith banned <laughs> from, from the Oscars. Said so, not bad, buddy. Not bad. I would expect nothing less from our boy Copper. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh, T Box is waiting for you guys in the large sit and go lobbies if you guys want to play hoops today. I love it. <laughs> I am playing hoops, but I'm not like thinking about it too hard. I'm just I'm just getting my entries in. Okay. Hey, I think uh a Rosen took one down. I think Allen took one down this weekend too. He's in this draft with us. Probably. Allen's yeah. having a hell of a 2024. Yeah, man. He's a he's a really good player on this site. The Poodle Gang, man. These Poodle Avies are just crushing. Yeah, man. He passed Ella too. Mm-hmm. Having some good success in the hoop streets. Yeah, you gotta you gotta earn that poodle. It's free to use, but you gotta earn it. <laughs> I like that. Oh. All right. Whom else um do we think is like Loki underpriced today? Matt Christian Walker off to a good start this year, hitting tanks. Christian Walker, Loki, one of my favorite players. He reminds me of like little bit better hit tool CJ Crone. Uh-huh. And I, I was addicted to drafting CJ Crow. You were. <laughs> um, Ryan Nelson is like nothing special. Uh, getting Aaron Judge always feels fine. Uh, okay. We could do a little AL East thing with him and uh, and Vladdy. We could do Jose Ramirez and get crazy, or we could do Freddie Freeman and just get chalky and then go crazy and then and then scroll. 
Let's do Freeman and Scroll. Okay. And then the reason we didn't take Jose is because that's who our pitcher is going to be. We're going to go Hancock. Nice. Let's hand. Let's Hancock it up, baby. No, you don't. We can say that we're taking Emerson because no one's going to snipe him from us. <laughs> you got to be screwed the bulldogs up. Bulldogs guy. Yeah, he's got he's got the little guy, so he's got Mac to represent for. They don't have any um, you know, they don't have any doodle mixes for us, John. You know, we've got to get out of the doodle or bust. Oh, we got a double here. Who who hit? I think it was Darno again. Oh, looks like Michael Harris. Ozuna leadoff single, Michael Harris. These freaking Braves, man, they're so good. Uh I, I drop a, a whom and whomst uh, every once in a while when we're drafting on here. Whomst isn't even a word. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. Most of the things. Oh, my God. They were waving in Ozuna, and he's just chugging along. He's a big boy right now. <laughs> oh, there's your Andy Abanya is going to be leading off. Damn. There. there I love that. Um, Arizona three-man or... What do you got for me? Oh, buddy. Uh, do, do, Too do late. Arizona. I, I, I like Arizona today against Luis Hill a lot. Um, okay. I think he's prone to, like, absolutely implode. He walks a ton of guys, and we've seen okay. the way that the, the D-backs are just rallying on pitchers. Um, I think Hill can find himself in a big hole really, really fast if the command isn't there. Plus, he throws hard, so you know you can get hit hard um, if you miss a spot. Um, I really like. I, I'm surprised that the D backs are as easy to stack as they are today. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I like that shot a lot, man. Arizona has been on one to start this year thus far, so good stuff. Um, Arosen doing the Detroit stuff, as we alluded to. Uh, Pastella doing some San Diego plus Dodgers stuff here um shit mix to start here houston plus dodgers and we'll see how brett lands this plane with a shit mix as well um just going for one-offs cool jeff mcneil sitting as well not as you would expect reese olsen's a righty um so they gave him the day off he's been struggling um, oh we got a lineup we already? just got that we, yeah it was just the mets one that we got in um I mean, we may have got some other ones, but I thought that was interesting. They got ba- uh, Brett Beatty in there today. Okay. Brett Beatty also left-handed. Huh. Um. Okay, so Lourdes Gurriel comes all the way back to us. Who do you prefer today, Jock Peterson or Lourdes Gurriel? Dude, I, I like uh, Jock Peterson. You know, I'm, I, I feel like I'm sort of on record as being a Jock Peterson guy. I love him today. He he goes way overlooked. Um, smelling a Grand Slam. All right. I like it. I, I mean, Grand Slam, that's a bold call, but I respect it. Uh, and then we're just buying a little bit of ceiling here with Emerson Hancock. Non-terrible matchup. A uh, guy who's got elite stuff in a good park. Yeah, hopefully this doesn't blow up in our face, but I like Hancock today. All right. Who doesn't? <laughs> Anybody Who's watching Brett? this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Brett Beatty, kind of yeah. you. Uh, any? I don't know. We got any rain going on in the Chicago games yet? No rain. It actually looks not that bad. <laughs> Shocker. Yep, the triple condom. Uh, Kevin Roth got me again. Damn. No, it's all good, man. Nobody's doing anything yet. Chris Flexen, man, professional pitcher. He's made it through four innings thus far. Actually, three and a third. <laughs> There's plenty of time for the wheels to fall off. <laughs> plenty of time. Just you. Um, did we talk about last year, one of the starts that I went to see Flexen and how he warms up? Uh, did no, we ever talk about that? No, what's he do? He Chris Flexen is like... 1980s baseball warm up to get un- unleashed. 
you know, like the new the new era of baseball is like so much of like the calisthenics and like the arm movement and the bands and the medicine ball and the weighted ball and stuff like this. Chris Flexen, man, he dead ass got like like two feet two feet on the line like this. Shoulders turn. Oh yeah. Just whipping it as hard as he fucking could, like right out the gate. No little like get the front side ready, no get the spin ready, nothing like this. Two feet on the chalk line, just trunk turns, throwing gas. Like he was sweating down his face, like just throwing, airing it out, throwing as hard as he could in the pen, like pre-start, just like an old school guy. That's how coach fun. that's how coach Nez used to warm up. He would just literally just feet planted and just get the get the torso yeah. and, and the and the shoulder ready to go. That's that's exactly why I described it that way. I was like, dude, like that's so old school. It like, is. The new, the new guys are so different. Like the driveline era guys, so different. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, Nez, what do you say we start dancing? All right, let's uh let, let let's do it. Let's let's, okay. let's get in here. This this is always a fun contest, but I like to wait for the playoff picture to get a little more clear. Uh, but it's this pretty is clear be right fun. now. Right now it is. I just haven't like done a ton of uh, research. Yeah. Oh, one more spot. Okay. I'm going to bring up the standings right now in the NBA. We haven't touched on NBA since last week. We've been very focused on the baseball stuff here. Um, all but all but um, the Nets have not been eliminated from um, the Eastern Conference here. So we are we are kind of like in a spot where we know where the teams are in the East. We just don't know where they're going to line up and who's going to be a part of that play in tournament. I guess Pacers, Heat, Sixers, kind of a bit battling it out for not being in the play in tournament. And it looks like Bulls, Hawks will just be in there whether or not Trey comes back kind of deal, right? Like that looks like the, the play in tournament is there. The West on the other side is like the hottest team on planet Earth right now is you just scroll uh, down right oh yeah there we go oh what there we go um the hottest team on planet earth right now is the dallas mavericks they have won 10 in a row and they have really vaulted up these these standings the pelicans look really good as well though their recent record doesn't necessarily reflect that but the wheels have low key fallen off um lakers and and golden state as they've slid down here Rockets pushing to make things interesting. Uh, they were playing some good basketball for a minute there, but I don't know if they'll be able to sneak in. So all that to say, um, we Loki, we Loki know the ten teams. We just don't know who will play one another. Exactly. That's that's the that, that's the trouble is figuring out mm-hmm. who's going to play who. Um, yeah, I I don't want the Warriors in there. Just just get them out. But, um, you know, I don't. Th- these th- this is a little tough, man. The, figuring out mm-hmm. this this playoff picture, um, and and getting Celtics is just like so hard to do in in the yeah in the dance. Well, as you can see, two Celtics just like went right off the top there. We have the Jalen Brown pick. We could do something from the West with SGA or Luca. That would probably be my preference. Um, yeah, I like the Dallas. Bigs are you like Dallas? Okay, let's do the Luca thing. I think they could do enough to not be in the play-in. Um, Zeke saying Lakers nine of their last ten. It's I think it's seven of their last ten. I think it's seven and three. So you know they're at the bottom there, but maybe misspoke on you know them playing poorly. Uh, SGA Brown go there. We could try and do something with auxiliary Milwaukee from the other side with like a Lillard thing here, we could pass up entirely on the Eastern conference until later. What do you like? Kyrie uh, we could pair with, I guess uh, Kyrie or Dame. Kyrie okay. Let's do really early Dame first. Then I, I know it sucks. Cause you're, you got to fight against the, uh, the Giannis drafter, but you can do Middleton and Brooke Lopez um, and and Bobby Portis there. Yeah. Um, and then we got is a choice. <laughs> and we got bigs for for days. Uh, for for Dallas, I think we have Gafford and PJ as 
as big, so I'm not. I'm. I, it's been a minute. I think PJ might be wing. Yeah, okay. PJ's wing. Yeah, All right, we, let's see. Where we're we're gonna we're here. gonna Gafford is penciled in here for sure. Oh yeah, we have the Sixers too, but like, I don't know, man. Is it who is anybody other than Bucks or Celtics like actually coming out of the East? I think Sixers if Embiid comes back, but that's a big question mark. I mean, he's coming back tomorrow. He like a hundred percent. That's what uh, Woe was just saying. Wow, because I saw he got the out tag for today. Pretty yeah, sure Knicks, tomorrow he's questionable. Knicks, Knicks or Cavs? Oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot. I, sorry, it's been a minute. I, I I was drafting a whole shit ton of Knicks. Um, when I whenever I was in here, uh, drafting. Mm-hmm. I was out tomorrow, but back soon. Yeah. Yeah, like see, I'm Miami. Just... Playoff Miami. If they avoid the play in, I guess. <laughs> I hate Miami, you hate dude. upsets. Miami is just so annoying, dude. Like they're not like they're not the best team in the East. They're just not like they. They made the finals two years in a row. And there was a ba- Jimmy, and it was man. and it was an awful NBA finals. <laughs> like it was not even good. You didn't like you didn't like uh you didn't like drafting Gabe Vincent every day for the finals. Damn, Embiid goes there. Yeah, Gabe Vincent or Caleb Martin roulette. That was fun. <laughs> um. All right. What do you like, Nez? We could do. Know? Yeah, Embiid just went. Yuck. Um. Could do Kyrie. Next- or Kai, just get Kyrie out of the way. Like we could do. I mean, the problem is every other team that we're doing right now, they don't have a ton of wings. That's like the biggest thing about Celtics and Bucks is like the wings factor. Well, that's why you draft PJ Washington. Yeah. And and, and Julius Randle. Should we take Middleton now, or should we <laughs> wait? You're not helping this. You're just laughing just, at my team. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, man. This is tough. I'm not in these streets enough to help to like make smart it's decisions. Is sad. Yeah, we know, Chip. All right. You don't we don't thanks a lot, <laughs> Captain Obvious. The March Madness team. <laughs> <laughs> what if? What if? I mean, oh, so far everybody we drafted can start for us. You get two flex. Yeah, just no more, no more purple. We're cranking purple off the top here. <laughs> um, Marky Music Group asking how the Mood Shot Monday works. Yeah, it's just for today's competition. So all those games, it'll start and finish tonight. So draft a team, throw it in the, throw it in with the. 6,000 other entries, and if you score the most, you take it down for tonight. I think we need some green. We Yeah, I think this is like evergreen, though. Like, everybody needs green. I got a plan, Ness. I got a plan. Uh-huh. Famous last words, eh? Yeah, take 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 me take me down this, this plan. I can't say it out loud yet. I don't think you have to worry about anybody copying us. They're going to snipe us, dude. Can Orlando make some noise in the East? Orlando's a pipe dream. They're fun, but like we need, okay. we need to give. We're doing, an, we're an doing immunity. Butler and we're doing Butler and Bam here. Yeah. Yeah. This, is a, ne- this is a necessary pivot. You just save this team with the, with the, with those with those picks. We could do Butler Bam, or we could do Brook Lopez first. Who do you want to do? Um, do Brook Lopez, and then hope Bam comes back because nobody's going to take Bam without Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope everybody plays along and helps us 
Okay. Build a competent team. You just say, say then, you just save the day, John. It, man, I'm a savant out here. It doesn't matter what the sport is. I'm gonna find a way to scroll and get it done. As this team looked, this team looked awful, and now it now it's okay. <laughs> always thought I was going Lakers from the jump. I always go Lakers. That's the only thing I do in these contests. Is like people. Do people forget playoff Lakers are a different beast? Obviously, look at these hoop, manual hoops bros like clowning on us. Like, dude, bunch of losers. Guys, you guys yeah, aren't are you guys, drafting the dance. Are you guys? Uh, are you guys not fucking hashtag hoops guys? We're hashtag hoops guys, not you guys. Okay, we will drive the bus around here. I'll show you how it's done, Chipsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Type in Mavericks just so we can get an idea of if there's anybody left for us to to take. I've already penciled in PJ Washington and Gafford on this team. Thank you. Like Gafford is such a monster. I love that that move. That was so good. Yeah, it's turned out pretty well. He's had a couple nice games there. I mean, we were the only guys in the world on it. Why is Michael Porter Jr. still on the board? Ask the the uh, the Nuggets Raptors. It's not. Yeah. Th- there was absolutely no no room for him on our team. <laughs> oh man! If he's getting all that EV out here. I gotta get in here, man. Fifty k to first is that's a that's oh, a. Fat... He almost made it work. What? Who the? F- Dude, the dope snake. He's just clicking buttons out here. Well, He's just taking all the best plays. Simple game. Unfucking real, dude. Good. I hope nobody in this lobby advances and dope snake does and just kills all of our dreams. Um, EJ Washington. Yeah. We're going to have to get creative here, Nez. Bobby Portis next. Two bigs, both from Milwaukee. I'm thinking. Who plays wing for Miami that we can add? Hero? I mean, or is he out for the season? Hero, Hero's a good question. He's guard. So is Terry Rozier's guard. Let's take Portis. Let's take Portis and Gafford. For sure, and then just hope we have a Miami piece. Yeah, why don't why don't Reed. I do this more? Like, I would I, I need to start like taking fifteen minutes out of my day to like do a dance draft and get pissed off when somebody snipes my team. Like this, that sounds <laughs> sounds like a thrill. Yeah, Miami's got Jaime. no wings. Yeah, Jaime. Yeah, Bam before Portis was, and then Portis later. So Bam before Brooke Lopez. Okay, Chip was right. This team would be much better if we went Bam instead of Brooke Lopez. I I got caught up in ADP, this artificial construct that was made up by you morons drafting this contest. It's all out of whack. (laughs) Great sell to drop the dance. We're all masochists here. <laughs> the the thrill is getting pissed. <laughs> Damn, dude. Even I mean, it's looks a, sharp, by the way. Sorry. I will say that it is a really good time to draft the dance. It's a really good time because the bracket is almost figured out. We just don't know matchups. And there's definitely like some CLV to be gained here. Yeah, I mean... Any day before, you know, before the, the 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 finals actually start is going to present you with CLV opportunities for sure. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize ETR has ranks for this. Interesting. Oh, nice. Who should we draft? <laughs> <laughs> that's going to, yeah, th- that that's going to change some things. You, you just need that just to. Just to know yeah, what other think, people are going to take. Let's think about this realistically, though. 
Who can come out of the East? Celtics, Bucks, Cavs, Knicks? Yeah. I think the I forgot about the Knicks when I first mentioned the East. I think the Knicks are actually like set up to to make a real run. Can we land really this? Good. Can we land this plane with Hart? Oh God! And no. Mitchell Robinson. Dude, is that what we want to do? I Why know, would you not take me. Daniel Gafford here? All right, fine. <laughs> so we're just playing. We're just playing Dallas out of the West. Yeah, it's what, we have no other the teams east. in the West. <laughs> okay, so this this pick literally has to be Miami. Then it has to be Miami wing, which is so gross. Duncan Can Robinson. Run, oh yeah. Well, does it? Who do we have at, at guard? So so okay. Let, let's if it's we got Miami, Luka, Dallas, Dame, Kyrie. We don't need a guard. If it's if it's Miami versus Dallas, what is our, what what do we look like? We have one Miami piece. Yeah. Is there not room for Terry? Yeah, we could do Terry. Terry's going to score more points than these guys. I'm just thinking like. Butler's our scoring wing anyways. Terry plays in the flex. Is he not? Does I think he's the most logical pick here. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right. Actually, like it just sets us up for those two outs. If if the if it's Mavericks versus either one of those teams. So we're cheering for Mavs Heat or Mavs Bucks. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. Otherwise, man, I yeah. shot off the ledge. <laughs> Like Knicks are awesome because like they're really easy to stack in this, and I think that they have legitimate ability to break out of the East. It took me a minute to shift into N- NBA Finals mode. I needed a second to kind of kick off the rust and think about like what like I was. I've been drafting Knicks from like the jump, okay, like, from from way too early dance to dance now. Uh, like once I get Randall back, like that's going to be a really big, really big help. So guys, I was thinking through. Embiid, Spider, Randall, and Cap. Those feel like guys that are gonna like shoot up as soon as they're back, right? Where where did uh, Spider go here? Spider went at thirty to crutches. So he did OKC, Boston, fall back on Cleveland, Boston, OKC. That's smart. I'm thinking through the Cleveland stuff. They are like, they're interested. I worry about like Donovan Mitchell's health a little bit. That's the only thing. Yeah. He played last night. Hasn't been right all season. We got the let him know. We got the let him know last night or the night before. Yeah. He just hasn't like looked right. Yeah. Crutch is cooked. If you, if you ignore Peyton Pritchard. Yeah, what's it, Pritchard going to get, what, like 20 minutes? Yeah, so we got a one seed in the East, a one seed in the West, and then Cleveland with it. We got a two seed, a play-in team, and the hottest team in basketball with Luka and Kyrie, all right? That's not bad. <laughs> I can tell it's- myself a story that the Mavs go to the finals. Man, the dance is fun. The dance is a lot of fun. I, it, like, it really feels like someone we know is going to take this down. Yeah, it does feel that way for sure. The yeah, NBA I, I, need, I need more entries in, like 50K. I could mm-hmm. use that. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> just got to figure out a way to, like, I just need to, like, never sleep, I think, is, is the key. <laughs> this is good shout. Cavs match up nicely with the West if they play Lakers or Clippers because of the wing oh, yeah. power. So you could do the bigs and the guards, and then you could do all the wings from one of the LA teams. Yeah, PG and uh, Kawhi. Yeah. PG, Kawhi, LeBron. Yeah, that matches up nicely. Um, 
it's really hard to find wing depth unless you go Pelicans or the LA teams in the East. Yeah, like, I mean, just look at the, the green on the board here. It is tough. Right. I like, like, I think we did okay. Yeah. I love the Pelicans, man. I know that they, nobody's, that, that's a surprise to nobody. They don't feel fun for fantasy. They feel fun where they could actually come out of the West. Like, I, they I, feel they, like they are very well put together. Yeah. Like they, they feel like they could play a team so effing hard. The only thing that I think holds back the Pels a little bit is they could get cooked by a good five. Because yeah. like Joe yeah. Val and Nance versus like AD, like AD is scoring 35 in three games in a series versus the Pels. Yeah, he's he's a problem for them, but they're 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 nice. <laughs> They're not nice. talk about good cooking around Zion. He'll yeah, put those man. 30 pounds back on in a heartbeat. Dude, even Bria, I was like, we were, I was watching the Pelicans one night, it was a couple nights ago. I was like, it's like Bria, like, like look at look at my boy Zion. Like, doesn't he look skinnier? It's like, oh wow. He <laughs> yeah, does. He's really slimmed down. Like, and, okay. and all the comments from the locker room on him are like that he's like acting like like a professional and he's locked in, like they've never seen him locked in before. Like we deserve this, man. Like, I'm so glad we yeah, had a full season of Zion because, like, God, man, there was not a – like, he's he's probably my favorite college player of all time. Like, that – his his shit at Duke was just absurd. It was insane. Yeah. All right, we got four more spots. If we fill this, we'll rip one last one. These things go fast when we're loaded up with you guys in here. That only took 10 minutes. Oh, just spilled the drink. All right, let me um let me get in here, man. I need, I need to get some drafts in, and if if people are going to be slow about this, let me let me hop in here before uh, before this lobby fills. I don't know, man. It takes two brains for me to figure out one of these teams. I want to watch you struggle. <laughs> Let's go. Well, Nick just gave me the skeleton key, so we'll see here. Oh, influencer one zero one, friends and family draft here. You should scroll the f down, John. But, uh -oh, I mean, that's your buddy. motto, right? What do you? What, I mean, see what you got. My new motto is uh, multi-sport draft leads. That is, I'm a multi-sport draft lead. There we go. We are draft leads over here. When I'm on the treadmill or the stairmaster, specifically. <laughs> All right. Okay. Joker and hope someone comes back to me. Like getting out of the West is just, it's kind of evergreen that it's way harder than getting out of the East. Right. I mean, it's all ambiguous to me, man. Other than like, I mean, I think the West is probably easier than the East. Cause I think the Celtics are just like far and away the best team in the East. Like not close, but I'm up. I mean, I'm up and I'm looking at like like what am I gonna do? Not take Giannis? Like, you know, you just gotta hope that it's possible. I mean, the Bucks are good, but I'm I'm so in on um on on the Celtics. Okay. Uh Crutch's baseball question is Keaton win suck. We're not sure. Uh what yeah, what, are you, sure what are you what do you what are you what are you trying to what are you trying to wager? Give you our opinion. He might be good, but he's facing the Dodgers, so he's probably going to suck. Uh, even Aga with a no-no right now, by the way. Wow. Nice. It would have been a perfect game, but there was an error by the Cubs. But he's Probably got, Christopher Morrell. <laughs> probably. Honestly. Um, but he's got eight Ks through five, dude. He's cooking. I have no Imanaga in the dailies. Yeah, me neither. Because I thought it'd be rain shortened. I went our boy Dane Dunning instead because right? you know, that's our guy. Uh, I went with our other guy. This is funny. It, Billy Jones say it was Morrell. classic. <laughs> That's so good. What's up, Ben? Those GMGM. He was looking at the lower than three and a half Ks. Sure. I mean, he's got swing and miss stuff allegedly, but it's the Dodgers. It's the Dodgers versus, versus a guy who's started what two big league 
games? Something like that. that. We looked at. Yeah. yeah. It's it, yeah. Seems seems good. All right, Nick stealing my dame. Thank you, dude. Love that. All right. Man, what do you? Yeah, like, what do you do? What do you do in these? All right, See, there, like, there. if I'm you right here, I think I build out Suns, and I take like KD. I was actually gonna um, start building out a uh, T Wolves. Actually, okay, yeah. Hey, nice. You think T Wolves nice have, have a better, better op? better chance to make the finals than the Suns. Fuck. Kind of, yeah. Jamal? Why? <laughs> Why? Take a Celtics. All right. Fuck it. Oh, my God. God help us. Double big. Joker and Bede, come at me. Are we calling the Timberwolves the pups? <laughs> That's good. The pups, I like kinda, that. Kind of like that. Al Horford is a 14th overall pick in the dance. Jesus Christ! Yikes! I mean, it is what it is. Bring back the Vancouver Grizzlies. Damn right, Ben. Let's bring them back. I'd get season tickets again. My oh. dad loves to tell me this story about the first time he ever took me to a hoops game. It was the Grizzlies. It was Portland. And apparently I wanted to see um, Dame Stoudemire. That was the guy in Portland back in the day, right? Uh, A guard, like when we were kids. Uh, on Portland? Well, I, I'm like drawing it. Damien a Stoudemire, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah, Damien Stoudemire. Yeah, I'm not crazy. And apparently I wanted to see him anyway. So my dad takes me for warm-ups and he takes me all the way down like court side for, for warm-ups and we're watching. And I was like, dad, these seats are awesome. Like, are these our seats? And he's like, no, no, our seats are like, you know, way up there, like bleeders. Right. And he, he's no, no, these aren't our, these aren't our seats or whatever. And I was like, well, we can't sit here then. Like, take me back, take me to our seats or whatever. My dad's like, what? Don't you want to like get autographs, get whatever. We're like an hour and a half early for the game. We He takes me like all the way up, nosebleed seats, only people in the building, in the upper tank. We sit down like, you know, five rows from the top. And I just go, wow, these are the best seats ever. There you go. <laughs> he Good tells me that story. He told me that story so many times. <laughs> that's, that's, that's adorable. All right. How, what are you going to um, do here? Are you you're just going straight sixers? Yeah, we're going to take Maxi and Tobias, I think. Take Maxi. I mean, this Josh guy's just stealing our Denver pieces for no reason right now. Um, yeah, I don't really want KCP. I'm gonna need a third team. KCP will um, play like 36 minutes, and that's you know. All right, I'll do KCP because and then you can start sniping. There. Yeah. The other one is like Christian Brown. Is Christian Brown going to play like a decent amount? Yeah, Mighty Mouse. There you go. I don't know. I really don't think so. Like, what's his ADP? Like, six, yeah, like he's he's barely being taken. Mm-hmm. All right, I got Ant, Giannis, Middleton, and Gobert. Um, we're going to add Cat, Conley, maybe even Nas to this team. Um we got, you know, we've got Giannis at the wing. I think this is where, like, we tell ourselves this is a Minnesota run, and mm-hmm. I start building out the Bing Bong secondary stack. Okay. Brown. <laughs> we need someone. Chip should offer like concierge services where he's just like, he's just he's just <laughs> your co-pilot in a draft and be like, don't do that. Don't do that. We need don't do Chip, that. Do you want to be the producer of the show? He's always <laughs> hanging out and stuff, anyways. You want Chip to be the producer? Want a job. Chip doesn't want a job. <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> Neither do I. Uh, <laughs> man, this is a staple though. The the 
the teal Mike Bibby jersey. I got one of those bad boys. Oh, yeah. You walk around in the summertime in, in Vancouver and everyone, you know, so many people rocking that one at the beach. So good. Yeah, those are those are so elite. Yeah. Oh. Canucks playoff. Dude. I got the email for like first dibs on Canucks playoff tickets after they clinched the other day. Upper bowl seats. 520. <laughs> Like, what are we fucking doing? Like, just abs- astronomical, man. Insane. Dude, who's going to these games? Right. Are, are, are like, fans I don't going? Know. You know, or is it just like, who's who's actually going? Once their sellout streak was over, man, they just like, you go on Ticketmaster like day of a game or whatever because they're doing well and they're like playing whatever. It'd be like 350 to go on like a Tuesday night in the lower bowl. It's like, what are we doing, man? That's horrific. It's insane. Like, there's a lot of money in this city that's propped up on nothing. Like, I can go on and on about that. Like, it's just, it's a fugazi, man. It's all about the real estate business. Um, fucking Bam just went too. Hmm. Take your Sixers, Come man. On. Just like build out the Sixers. Well, I was thinking one more wing depth. I'm taking one off LeBron for wing for wing depth. All right. Then we're taking Tobias. That's just like so... <laughs> We got I this. Get it. You needed it. You needed it. That's fine. I need it. That's fine. You needed it. It's approved. Oh, that's funny. Oh, John, I got a new hat in the mail. I'm on the clock. Ooh. Hold on. I'm still here. Yeah, Nuckies might be a fake wagon. Of course they are. They're fun to watch this year, though. Yeah, I said they were fake wagon. Boom. Check check me out. A little, little scroll there daddy. There you go. Nice. Beautiful. This is That's nice. I can't lid. do the I can't do the flat bill snapback stuff, man. That's not Yeah, That's we're not dad the, hat guys. Yeah. yeah. My favorite hats are all those uh 47 series. Oh yeah, dude. 47 brand yeah. is uh, is where it's at. Yeah, oh boy, I'm on are... the clock. I'm on the clock. Um we just keep going bing bong. Yeah. It's the best part about building building Knicks, man. No one's no one's in your way. They just they just let you get all of these tremendous role players. <laughs> Copper. Just cracking me up. All right. D D-Lo. So now it's not a one off anymore. Now it's a Yeah. We're saving it with that one. And then we're going back to uh, we're going back to Sixers. Oh shit! I forgot you can't do that. There you go. Um, Kelly Oubre probably. Or yeah, probably Kelly Oubre. Maybe Buddy Heald. Buddy Heald can get hot and fill it up. Oubre's. Who's a better pick right now? Oubre. Who's a better pick? Uh, Heald or Lowry? Probably healed. Bench handling unit. Is OG gonna? Is OG no, gonna play Nick, again? Nick was saying he's dead. Are we serious? Nick said he's he's dead. Marquis, we got the flat brims too, bro. Some guys are flat brim guys. Some guys are snapback guys. Some guys are brim guys. Chip with the uh, neither saying he would go Melton. Mm, Melton's not crazy. OG's closer to Randall, it seems. Josh Hart had a quote about it. 
Wow, man, they've got no wings in Minnesota, huh? No. Damn. Kyle Anderson play slow mo. Do I just go one off here? If you do a one off, do like Pascal or or Hallie or something like that. Like Hallie could get hot, and especially like if you're looking for like the one off at the end of drafts, like we did last year with Trey. I think it's a better move to take Hallie this year because they won't be in the play in and at least Hallie could like push a series and it'll be a pace up series. Right. Yeah. I meant to, to, uh, to, to do the one off, uh, but I didn't, I accidentally, should I do Hallie or should I do Sixers? Uh, probably Melton. Yeah, I think Melton makes more sense there. You got Maxi's D- Maxi and D'Lo are decent guards. Yeah, let's check that one. All right, did we land this plane? The Joker and Bead start double bigs, shut it down. We got sniped on Jamal for no reason, Josh. I'm looking at you. Josh takes Jamal here. It would have been nice if he had come back to this, but we fall back on Aaron Gordon, Maxi, KCP. Then we took a little detour to the Lakers because they're going to play them in the Western Conference Finals, LeBron and D'Lo, and then Tobias Harris, Oubre, and DeAnthony Melton. Hopefully the Sixers go to the Finals and they play seven games the whole fucking way because that's the only way. That's the only way that these last three picks are going to be uh, relevant. That's hilarious. All right, Nez, what'd you do here? Yeah, we went a little uh, Bucks to T Wolves with the backdoor onslaught of the Knicks. So mm. we got four three three. With Ant Edwards, Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, Mike Conley. At wing, okay. we've got Giannis, Middleton, and Randall. And then at the bigs, it's just straight Minnesota. So, you know, we, we need Minnesota versus one of these teams. And at big, it's Gobert, Cat, and Nas Reed. Um I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't hate it. Yeah. I think I think. You know, for a, guy, a couple of guys who haven't been in the dance streets, I think we're 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 holding our weight right now. It's like riding you know, the fucking we make, bike, man. Yeah, we made like seven out of ten teams. GA, you can't say Nez Cook just because he took Minnesota guys. <laughs> yes, he can. GA never <laughs> says anything nice to me, so I gotta I gotta take this <laughs> when he does. Oh man, here here Josh is in here. Josh is having, he's Josh is in here ruining my teams. Yeah, he's defending. He's defending his actions. He got a uh, yeah. He landed the plane because he went multiple Denver and he added Reggie Jackson. So he's off the hook. He's off the hook there. Aiden Pritchard. All right, that's pretty fun. I'm back in on the dance, man. I'm back in. I know there's just so much to to draft. Like I need right. Yeah. Like. I need I need a weekend to just ign- have no responsibilities and do nothing but just like just, just draft. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Need to get this volume in, man. <laughs> Blake acting surprised, like only three drafts for me, dude. Yeah, I'm a fraud. I'm the biggest fraud ever. <laughs> you got him, okay? You got him. Um, yeah, Blake. We will do uh, Zamboni soon. We will do Zamboni as well at some point. Um, all right, Nez, let's tie a bow on it. We got to get to drafting in these MLB streets. If you guys are still hanging out, please do not forget to hit that like, that subscribe, that notification. Tell your friends about the show, please, and thank you. We would like to keep coming back. Um, much love to all of you who found success over the weekend there. Best of luck, Daytime Diamond. Best of luck in the Hoop Streets tonight. Best of luck in the Puck Streets. Best of luck in the MLB Streets tonight. Very special guest tomorrow. 
as we hope and pray and fingers crossed to do the crossover show between uh, the Badge Bros and Baseball is Dead uh, with uh, uh, Jared Carabas. So really looking forward to that. Hopefully, hopefully it comes to fruition tomorrow. Uh, any parting words, Nez, for the people? I'll see you in the lobbies. Good luck. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Good luck. Looking to extend their streak to be the uh, the um, only undefeated team in at Major League Baseball at five and zero. Them, the, the only five and zero teams. There's other undefeated teams, but that'll be the only five uh, five and zero team after tonight. That's right. There you go. There you go. All right. Best of luck to everybody. We will be back tomorrow. Uh, scheduling note for tomorrow and Wednesday. 1.30 Eastern. Both those shows will be half an hour earlier than normal, and then we'll figure out Thursday and Friday as we go. So on behalf of Nez, the good people at Underdog, and myself, uh, best of luck to everybody. Damn it, Ozzy Albies just hit a double off the wall, and the Braves are cooking, and I am officially dead in the daytime. <laughs> Come on, rain. All right. Uh, everybody's favorite top of the show. The end. Peace.